contract administration is also a corruption-prone area. Since construction projects always involve large amounts of money if there is corruption, the clients will suffer substantial financial loss. Now, let's watch the following clip. Have you decided on the material? No, well, I'm the main contractor. I've subcontracted to him. I'm getting a few quotes. I'll hear from them in a few days. Specified waterproofing material costs 1200 I'm looking for something under 800 Wow, a few hundred bucks. We're going to make a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> well, call me when that's done, and I'll issue a VO. Once approved, get on the job and split the cash. Remember the Kung Wo project? I submit the lowest bid and made nothing. If I hadn't bribed the architect for issuing a VO, I couldn't have even broken even this year. Ah, oh, forget it. I don't like to mention the past. The clip we saw brings out two corruption risks. Contract variation is a corruption-prone area in contract administration. When a contractor wants to make up his profit margin after he has submitted a very low bid, he may compromise the project staff in order to obtain more payments through the issue of unnecessary or overvalued contract variations. This can include inflated costs and expenses or superfluous construction. To prevent abuse, the client should very clearly designate the approving authorities for contract variations. They should also require resident site staff to provide justifications and cost estimates when issuing contract variations and set a ceiling on the value of contract variations allowed under a contract. For example, 50% of the contract. Works that exceed the ceiling should be let under a completely separate tender. Now let's move on to the second risk in this clip. The second risk is substituting materials with cheaper alternatives. Some construction contracts have specified the materials to be used in the works. Contractors may recommend the architects to approve the use of cheaper substitutes or even substandard materials to pocket the price difference. They may even resort to bribing the architects to approve the use of the cheaper substitutes. Consultants, when drawing up the specifications, should ensure that there are sufficient choices of materials available. In addition, all materials must comply with the specifications and any changes to materials should be covered by the contract variations. When necessary, the client should engage an independent quantity surveyor to assess the cost savings arising from the use of the cheaper alternative and adjust the payments to the contractors accordingly. In Hong Kong, main contractors commonly subcontract their works to different subcontractors. Subcontractors may then in turn subcontract their works to a third tier subcontractor. The multi-layer subcontracting is very common. But if there are too many layers of subcontracting, the subcontractor at the lowest tier will have less construction fees available. Therefore, when the fee is too low for quality construction works, the risks of corruption increase. Now let us watch the following clip to see another problem. Now, for fire engineering, subcontract to a third party. This time, don't mess it up. Don't worry, brother Bo. It's not the first time we work together, right? Wait for your money. <laughs> Brother Ho, we're short of men and we've got no time. He isn't the first to complain. Can't you find more workers? You know I'm the third tier subcontractor and I only get a small share. If we had more men, I'll be losing money. I have a buddy who makes fire doors. The quality is subpar, but you know, they're so much cheaper. How about this? Keep 10% of the standard doors, and the rest, we use the cheap ones. So we can see from the clip that there are too many layers of subcontracting, and the margin for this subcontractor is too low. He has to cut corners on fire services engineering and use substandard doors. To minimize the corruption risk of multi-layer subcontracting, the government has stipulated in its works contract to control the layers. 
and to prohibit subcontracting of works to another company in whole. Private developers can also follow the practice adopted in the public works contracts for better risk management. Let's see the next clip. The balance, I can ask the developer to pay you, even when it hasn't been completed. But my sum from you will have to increase by 40%. Uh, no problem, sir. As long as we can fix it. We see that architect Chan accepted bribes from subcontractor Wong to approve payment of incomplete works. However, in the end, subcontractor Wong absconded. This resulted in a large financial loss by the client. The large sum of money involved in construction projects not only brings about high risks in the site supervision process, it also leads to risks in the payment process. Without checks and balances, during the construction process, contractors may bribe the site staff to exaggerate the work's progress or even certify payments, although the works have not been completed. To mitigate corruption risks, consultants should process contractors' application for payments in accordance with the contracts and lay down relevant guidelines, including requiring all of the contractors to provide detailed and supporting information when applying for payments, verifying the construction progress on the site itself against progress claimed by the contractors, and conducting technical audits regularly on payment valuation carried out by resident site staff. You want me to grant an extension of time? No problem. But you better be sure about the time. I don't want to have another delay. I have a name to maintain. Okay, two weeks, I promise you. You're lucky. Heaven's on your side. We had a three-day typhoon. I have enough reasons to give you a three-week extension. Under most construction contracts in Hong Kong, contractors have to pay liquidated damages to the clients for any delays in completion of the works, unless they have been granted an extension of time for completion of works which have not yet been started or are partially completed. In the video we saw, subcontractor Wong bribed architect Chan for approving an unjustified extension of time in order to evade the payment of liquidated damages. To avoid approving any unjustified extensions of time, the client should designate the authorities for approving claims of different magnitudes and require the contractors to submit records. These records should provide detailed explanations for the delay. Also, consultants should record all of the details and justifications to facilitate supervisory checks and technical audits. When necessary, the clients may form a committee to assess and approve the claims for any critical extensions of time. That was an introduction on the corruption risks and preventive measures in construction. We truly hope that it could assist you in proper risk management during the process and building with integrity. For more information about the corruption risks and preventive measures in the construction industry, you may refer to the best practice checklist for works projects published by the ICAC, which can be downloaded from the ICAC website. Or you can always reach out by phone or by email. You can rest assured that the Advisory Services Group of the Corruption Prevention Department will always offer practical corruption preventive advice. Of course, if you suspect any corruption in a construction project, please report the matter immediately to the ICAC. Thank you for watching.